Lake Smith, and welcome to the New Heights Adventure Club. Hey, it's Slayton Smith here for our third episode of the New Heights Adventure Vlog. Um, today we're at Yarra once again, and we're going to catch up with Robbie Morgan, who's an expert in group facilitation, lectured outdoor recreation for about six years at Avondale College. Um, just an adventurer, likes bushwalking, hiking, climbing, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, so yeah, we're going to be meeting up with him here at our rock climbing tower. And yeah, we've got some kids coming up in a little bit for a bit of a nav style session, so we'll help out Robbie with that. And here he is. Hey, hey, how are we today? <laughs> I've got my harness and my helmet on, so time to climb up this good old crusty tower. Let's go up this tower. Alright. Made it up the tower. The top of Yarrahakini. Awesome. Over there we've got Robbie. So Robbie, tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from and a bit of your experience in outdoor rec. Yeah, well, uh, so my name's Robbie. I grew up in Southern California and um, love to surf, skate, write music, climb rocks, go camping. It's a good time. Um, I got into outdoor, well I got into the outdoors really through my dad, so he used to take us camping as kids and that's the highlight of my childhood is, is those memories of going, going out to the lake, going fishing, going camping with my dad. Um, when I was about 21 I moved to Australia to do an outdoor recreation course. I'd started rock climbing a little bit before that and um, yeah, through the course of doing that for a year I got really excited about the industry, fell in love with the opportunity that it provides for personal growth and development and uh, really wanted to stick into that industry and try and just impact lives that way and wound up continuing in that work for another six years. Cool. Yeah. So Robbie, tell us what your craziest epic adventure is that you've ever been on. Oh man, there have been a couple. But one that sticks out in particular it was a climbing trip. It was my first trip down to Arapiles. I was learning to do multi-pitch, went down with a good mate. And um, we'd been climbing for a couple days. It was summer. So you'd climb in the morning, have like a siesta for like four hours, and then go climb into the night. And so we picked this climb, and me and my mate, we started heading up this like four-pitch route. We're climbing up. Wasn't in, well, the route wasn't insanely difficult, but we wound up off route on the last like two pitches. And before we got up there, I was like, oh, it might get dark before we go down, so I'll just uh, make sure I pack my torch, put it in my backpack. He climbed up, anchored on the first pitch. I was about to climb up, and I was like, I don't want to carry this bag. Totally forgot my torch. Left it on the ground, and we, we're sitting up. I'm on the third pitch. Dodgy, dodgy feeling section. Kind of sketchy gear. Set up the best anchor that I could. It was just safe enough. Anchored in, and I'm trying to figure out where we're supposed to go, and it's getting dark, and I'm like, I left my torch in my bag at the bottom of the cliff. So my mate climbs up to me, he, he tops out, it's getting real dark. So we're up the top, no torch, the only way back down is to wrap down 80 meters. And um, we're trying to find the anchors, <laughs> so stoked when we did. <laughs> Set everything up, double check everything by braille because you couldn't really see too well. We wrap off to the, the next anchor 40 meters down, we clip in, he clips in. We're going, we're pulling the rope down. I get get to the end of the rope and like pull out my knots. All right, Ada, check check that the knots are out. So he checks, I check, we're like, sweet. No knots in the end of the rope and we start pulling, pulling. And all of a sudden we get to the end, we're just pulling gently so it doesn't flick around and boom, she's stuck. <laughs> so we're sitting here at the, like 40 meters off the ground, no torch, stranded, the rope's stuck in the top. And we're like, okay, what are we gonna do? Luckily, we were climbing with double ropes, so we had an option to set up a fixed line. So we did that, and we got out. But <laughs> it was one of those moments where you're like, man, 
probably should have thought things through a little bit better. And um, I learned some valuable lessons that day. First of all, I mean, just bring a torch. Yeah. <laughs> Always have a torch. It's not, it's not a bad idea. But I learned that, you know, when, when you go out, you, you really have to plan for the worst and then hope for the best because there's sometimes where you're going to go out and you're going to wind up in a stitch, you're going to wind up in the dark. And it's, it's best if you've prepared for this situation, you've kind of thought things through. So when you wind up in that spot, you can kind of make the most of the situation and whoa, and try and get some things sorted. Oh, I'm, Check I'm your anchor. An anchor man. You, know, you got to make sure you plan for the worst. <laughs> cool. Personally, what's your greatest achievement that you think you've done or had in the outdoors? Um, so one, one, one standout was, was the first time I did a, like a climb to 22. That was a big goal for me. And um, not, nothing real exciting, but I remember we'd, we'd set up to lead it. A friend of mine went up and did it. I went up and, and, and finally got through the moves and seconded it successfully. And I was like, oh man, let's, let's do this. I'm feeling strong, feeling good. My fingers are taped up. So I just got up there and got through the moves. And the first second, the, the, the first bolt was kind of dodgy. That was like the crux. And so moved through that without falling and then kind of was just like, don't fall, don't fall. Made it through to the top. So that was pretty exciting. Cool. One of those golden moments. Yeah, nice. <laughs> what sort of life lesson did you learn from your little grade 22 climbing experience <laughs> there? Probably the best thing I learned out of that experience was to just go hard. And you've got a goal, chase it. Put in the effort, put in the hard yards, and when you actually come to the moment, you know, you can plan, 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 but when it comes time to execute, just give it everything. Go hard and go till you fall. So tell us, Robbie, what's your number one expertise, I guess, or skill when it comes to the outdoors um, and working with kids? Yeah, well, I'm, I'd probably say that, um, well, I do get pretty stoked. Stoke is pretty high on the list, probably. You know, a froth on everything. Um, but I think honestly, the, the best thing that I bring to the table when I'm working with, with other people is just, is just patience. Um, just, just the ability to sit back and focus on the person and say, hey, we're here to help you learn and let's do the best that we can to help you achieve your outcomes. And if, if you can bring that, it, it'll be all right, you know? Cool. Well, it looks like your kids are here, Robbie, for the ab sailing. So we'll get into the activity and we'll finish these questions. Alright, to be continued. She feeds cool. me in the night, but in the morning tries to take my life. The only way to survive is to brave the line between life and death. You just can't hold your breath forever. So, what ways did you learn how to sort those things out? Deal with it. Deal with it. So you gotta kind of just suck up some of the pain. Yes. Some things are worth the sacrifice. Cool. Yeah. So sometimes you just kind of like gotta make do with what you've got, don't you? You gotta figure out. Okay, how I've got 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 this. This is my circumstance. We just make do with what we've got. Figure out how to work with it. So what did you do to deal with the shoes? They were slippery. So you slid down. So you adjusted your technique, right? How important is that in life? Cool, so we're back after our first session of the abseiling. How did it think it went? Well, I think it went pretty well. We had um, just about everybody going again. Everybody this week has made some progress and had a couple guys keen to go face first and do that. So, little developments as we go along. So, Robbie, tell us about your most challenging or worst decision you've made in outdoor rec or as a leader. Yeah, oh, this, yeah I'm sure there's lots of learning decisions that you make. Um, probably the most challenging thing that I had to deal with was um, a, a few years into my my training um, career. One of the one of the guys that I had trained um, after he finished his his quals, he was off doing a trip in the Blue Mountains, and he actually died in an accident abseiling. And um, you know, for for a couple years, I really I really blamed myself for that, and um, it it took a real heavy hit on on my ability to, to be a leader, my ability to just value myself. You know, you run through those scenarios where did I did I did I teach them enough? Did I, I mean, oh what what about what about that day when I said this? Maybe they misunderstood what I meant by that. Oh and you start to run through all of these things and you go, how could I have done that better and, and sit there with that hindsight that doesn't do you any good. Um, and that was a really hard experience for me and I was 
I was really honestly quite depressed for a couple of years about it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to go and get help because I thought if I go to get, you know, see a counselor or go to talk about this, that you know, there's something wrong with me. I can't sort my issues out. I was, there was this stigma about it for me. It's okay for everyone else to get help, but not for me. And um, eventually I got to a point where I just, I needed to go sort those issues out. So I went and I saw a counselor and I got help. And, um, you know, through that experience, I've learned a lot better how to manage myself, how to look at a situation more honestly and to not... Um, to not put onus on yourself for things that are not yours, but to take responsibility for the decisions that you've made as well. Um, and I think at the end of the day, learning that to get help is not weakness, but to get help is to, to become better is, is probably one of the best lessons that I got out of that. It was, um, it was quite a challenging experience. Okay, Robbie, yeah, that's a heavy um, thing to have yeah. on your mind there. Um, so how have you moved forward from that situation? and? So how do you teach or how do you approach teaching now? Yeah, well, one, one thing that, that really struck me from that experience was that you don't know how much time you've got on this earth, man. You really, you really don't know what you've, what you've got in front of you, so you really have to make the most impact with the people that you're with that you can in the time that you're given. So it, it really taught me to approach each day and each situation, each group, each person with what is the ultimate outcome I want to leave with these people and how do I get there so that at the end of the day we're not wasting time so we can make the biggest impact because time is short. Yeah, so one of the things that helped me most was um, David Haupt, the dude I counseled with, he said to me, take your pain and dedicate it to God in service. He said that was basically the pathway to healing and you know there's you can you can have the worst experience you can have someone who's maybe even experienced something like abuse or sexual abuse and they take that painful experience and they they utilize that as as an opportunity to say go into something like counseling where they can assist others who had that experience and take their trauma and help them to experience healing and peace through that and by taking your trauma and, and opening it up and being able to give that to someone else to let them know how to how to be okay to know they're not alone in that experience it's just, this is the pathway to recovery. It's the way to take something that is the worst thing and redeem it to make it something that becomes the pathway to something beautiful. And um, that, you know, that's, that's I think, the best thing that you can do. Cool. Awesome. I was cast upon the ocean A free man yet a slave Drift on open water. Cool, so following up from that, what is your greatest achievement or greatest moment in outdoor earth? Um, one of my best moments was um, one of the, the first couple of years I was teaching, I had um, I had a pretty small cohort of students and I had um, one student in particular and she was, she was at the lower end of the class and so in all of the activities she was kind of towards the bottom but she always gave it a go, she was always willing to try and um, at the end of our two years we, we'd gotten her from the point where, you know, entry level, she didn't know anything. She was learning how to do everything from scratch, doing the first abseil, going out, learning how to use a compass. And we got to this point where we were on our final climbing trip, our big, our big, like, end of the year finish up finale. And I put her on this climb. The difficulty wasn't, like, through the roof, but she had to climb this crack. So she's going up. And I had this moment where this student who had started off as probably the, the, the lowest end on the physical in most of the areas, um, she just started to shine. She was going up and she was, she was the best out of all of the students up to this point at just picking her route, planning what she was doing, and being able to cleverly place gear so that she was safe and adequately protected. And I remember I was talking to her at one point and she was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, what about this? And I made some suggestions, and she just looked back down at me, and she was like, I'm all right, I got this. And it's just placed her gear, kept going, no stress, and she got to the top, and that was just probably the proudest moment of my outdoor experience. Nice. So what made that experience so rewarding for you? Oh, dude. You know when you're like watching like a footy game or something, and you've got this underdog, and the underdog wins, and you're just like, yes, go! It was that kind of feeling, like, this is somebody that that you know, just so excited to see succeed, and to be just to just to recognize that my efforts have been just even the smallest part of this person developing and growing 
I was just psyched out of my mind. It was so good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, so Robbie, what's your parting advice or uh, words of wisdom for myself starting this business or anyone watching? Yeah, um, my parting advice would be give it everything you've got. Put your all into it, put your blood, your sweat, your tears into it and realize you're going you're gonna to make mistakes, you're going to have fumbles. But I love this ancient Chinese proverb that says, failure is not falling down, it is refusing to get back up. So whatever goes on, I think, do your best, learn everything you can, always strive for excellence, and when you make a mistake, get up, learn from the mistake, and move forward. Successes always come out of fail experiences. Cool. Well, that's the end of our third episode. So thanks, Robbie, for hanging out. No worries, man. And um, telling us your stories. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. Out, Brussels sprout. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>